Face Clan is home to many of the best Fortnite players. From the debatable goat in Tifu to the 13-year-old prodigy in High Sky 1, Faye's list of accomplished players is very, very long. And because the list is so long, we sometimes forget to pay our respects to some incredible players. Today, we're going to appreciate Faze's cloak and Nate Hill. Cloak has been Tifu's partner since the beginning of time. They're Fortnite's original one-two punch. I'm talking Kobe and Shaq level. Many see Tifu as the muscle and Cloak as the brain, but it's not that cut and dry. Cloak solidified himself as an individual superstar at the Fall Skirmish Grand Final, where he picked Tifu up and carried him across the finish line for the first place finish. When you think of FaZe, Cloak's name should be right next to Tifu's. Nate Hill headlined the second wave of Fortnite stars. He came out of nowhere and shook the competition with his dual partner, Funk Bomb. When you look at his performances, it's a huge mystery why he's not talked about more. In his last eight tournament appearances, his worst outing was seventh place. That's unheard of in pro Fortnite. He's literally the model of consistency, and that's a great way to sum up his actual skill set as well. When you watch Nate Hill, you know exactly what you're going to get. In this video, I'm going to highlight each player and tell you guys who I think is better. I'm going to use the same categories as my other videos. Aim, building and editing, game sense, clutch factor, and teamwork to help me decide. This might be my toughest comparison yet, so I really need to hear your input in the comments. Without further ado, let's get started. FaZe Clan is famed for their trick shots, dating back to their COD days, so of course, Cloak and Nate Hill have incredible aim. I'm going to decide the winner based on their consistency and close range flicks. In mine and many others' opinion, Cloak is the king of sniping. His track record starts from the early boat action days, where he chained together ridiculous snipes on a regular basis. Even though snipers aren't the best thing in the meta right now, he makes it work. Another thing to consider is that great snipers usually have awesome AR aim. This works out because he does most of his damage in the end game from high ground. As for his shotgun flicks, they're certainly scary. However, if there's a way to be cloak, it's definitely up close. I'm not saying he's on the lower end of the shotgun aim, I'm just saying that he has a weakness. Nate Hill, in contrast, has a very strong close range game. Whether it's his SMG tracking or mind blowing flicks, Nate Hill isn't a player that you want to fight in close quarters. He also has a consistent mid-range game that opens up his shotgun play, so overall, he's very solid. It simply comes down to the fact that you can count on Nate Hill hitting his shots in every setting more often than not. And that's why I'm going with Nate Hill here. I have Nate Hill at a cool 5 out of 5 and Cloak at a 4 out of 5. There are just no weaknesses when it comes to Nate Hill's aim. It's just like his play, consistent. Nate Hill takes the lead at 1-0. Let's see who takes the win on building. Cloak and Nate Hill aren't the first names that pop up in your head when you think about all the great builders. But they're still good in their own ways, so let's break down the key differences and decide who's flat out the better builder. Cloak might not be able to perform the craziest retakes and edits, but he's among the best in building strategy. And what I mean by that is, he knows when to go for high ground, when to push, and pretty much how to build meaningfully. That's arguably more useful than building mechanics because he's an in-game focused player. Knowing when to push high ground or stay on mid-ground is a priceless skill that you either have or you don't. If you don't agree, then watch any tournament in-game from Cloak's POV. The man has the ability to play the entire lobby like they're puppets. It's truly a thing of beauty. Nate Hill's building is very interesting to say the least. It's not very clean. <laughs> You'll see some build and edit fumbles. But at the end of the day, he manages to win high ground still. His building is so unorthodox that it causes confusion during already hectic fights, but everything is clear as day for him. In that sense, he's inefficient, but effective. He also is a great building strategist himself. Every single skirmish, every individual game, you'll see Nate Hill and that mass of 40 players in the end game waiting for his opportunity to strike, just like Cloak. So they both value strategy over raw mechanics. It's hard to say one player has the superior strategy, so we have to go with who has better mechanics. And that's Nate Hill. I have Nate Hill at 4 for building and Cloak at 3. So, it's 2-0 in favor of Nate Hill. Are we going to see the reverse sweep from Cloak? Let's see who has the better game sense. 
Cloak and Nate Hill are both players that make the right play. But at the end of the day, what really is the right play in Fortnite? There are so many variables, so many factors that no one can truly account for. That's why I'm going to decide the winner based on how well they make adjustments on the fly. If I was given the impossible task of choosing a single player that is shaped in-game in Fortnite the most, then Cloak would be in the running. I love how he's able to make long-term plans with a simple glance at the state of the lobby. The reason that he stands out in terms of his game sense is that he's daring. He's willing to risk it all on a play that he's never practiced before because it's the optimal play on paper. In traditional sports, we say that he has the DNA of a champion, and you know exactly what I mean if you've seen Cloak do the unthinkable in the end game. He's also clearly ahead of the pack in terms of rotation knowledge. That's why we almost see him not only win high ground all the time, but consistently make it to the end game as well. Nate Hill's game sense is overlooked because he tends to sit tight and wait until the end game, so you don't get a chance to see him in action until he already built up a huge advantage. When mobility items were still in the game, Nate Hill was among the smoothest players at using the grappler and shockwave grenades. But unfortunately, those items are vaulted, so a lot of his playmaking potential has been shut down. But still, Nate Hill is always one to entertain his stream with the 1 in 1000 play. In pro games though, he doesn't stray too far from what he's comfortable with, and he won't go for the same plays Cloak would. I wouldn't fault you for saying that Nate Hill is in the top 5 for best game sense, but Cloak is on another level. I have Nate Hill at 5 out of 5 in game sense and Cloak at 6 out of 5. Cloak has built an incredible career thus far largely off of his game sense, and there's almost no denying that he's going to go down as one of the greatest minds in Fortnite. The score is 2 to 1 in favor of Nate Hill. As we move into the next category, Clutch Factor. These guys are both in the top 5 for tournament earnings, so they're without a doubt among the most clutch players in the game. Even the best players haven't necessarily ever achieved a professional victory in Royale, but a win is another day at the office for Cloak and Nate Hill. I'm going to talk you through some key points about each player before letting my gut decide which player is more clutch. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record for saying this, but Cloak is the type of player that you bet all of your V-Bucks on to win the game. It doesn't matter how dire things look for Cloak, he's a huge threat to win the game and the entire event. In my other video where I compared Tifu and Mongrel, I said that Tifu was hands down more clutch than Mongrel. I wouldn't have been able to say that without Cloak's help. Like most amazing things in this world, Cloak's ability to remain relevant in every game can't be explained. It just sort of happens. Nate Hill isn't a pushover either. Like I said earlier, Nate Hill has placed in the top 10 more times than pretty much everyone. He even has two first place finishes. This guy's track record is just about the best you can ask for. He's a winner through and through. However, Nate Hill is not my pick for this category. You might not follow Fortnite's esports closely, but Cloak's performance at the fall skirmish really put him over the top. I have Nate Hill at 5 out of 5 in clutch factor and Cloak at a 5 point 5 out of 5. They're both winners, but I'm a huge fan of Cloak and what he's been able to accomplish. The score is all tied up at 2-2. Two to two. Let's see who takes home the trophy. Cloak's partner has always been Tifu, and Nate Hill's partner has always been Funk Bomb. Although Cloak and Tifu are more well-known, Nate Hill and Funk Bomb are arguably right there with them in skill. I'm going to base my decision on who would perform better if given a random teammate at a high-stakes tournament. Cloak's mouth runs like a motor, going a mile a minute when he's playing seriously. His callouts range from an announcement of a single SMG shot to a full-blown in-game plan. In other words, as long as you trust him, he'll guide you. Something I do want to throw out real quick is that Cloak has a natural charismatic aura, so he doesn't feel like a dictator when he's given direction. And with his knack for winning time and time again, it's probably in everyone's best interest to listen up and follow blindly anyways. Nate Hill seems to focus a lot more on his own play than taking on the leadership position. There's nothing wrong with that at all. He simply favors a collaborative shot calling process as opposed to a one-man show. I actually think that Nate Hill might be a better solo than duo player, despite all his success in duos. This being said, you already know that I have to give this category up to Cloak. I have Cloak at a 5 out of 5 and Nate Hill at a 4 out of 5 in teamwork. Cloak is the model teammate and is the definition of a winner. I can't wait to see him pull out some heroics in the World Cup. The final score is 3-2 in favor of Cloak.
he was able to win me over in the last three categories. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me in the comments below and be sure to include your reasoning. I want to hear it. I've hoped that I've inspired some of you guys to check out both Cloak and Nate Hill. They stream all the time, so give them a shout out and tell them that you went to their stream after watching this video. Hey, once again, it's Keith Allen Henson. Once again, I would love to hear from you on my Instagram. Come and follow me, send me a message. I'd love to hear from you and uh, stay tuned for more videos coming out.